recognize the picture that is on your screens right now? That is correct. This is one of the seven wonders of the world, which is called the Taj Mahal. Now, if you look at the features that this architecture has, where do you think these features were adopted from? So these features were adopted from the architectural features of the Islamic world. Now, if we look at the timeline um, on the screen right now, we see that all these events, for example, the event of Muhammad's birth in 570 AD, uh, and then again his revelation in 610 AD, to the time when Muhammad started his um, political and religious preachings from 610 to 632 AD till the time when Muhammad dies is the point of time when certain political changes are happening or they are taking place in order for Islam to grow. Then we see the divide of the Shias and Sunnis in 645 AD and the compilation of Quran. Now, these two events ultimately marked um, the sort of institutionalizing of this particular religion that was Islam, right? But after these events as well, there are certain other political events that are taking place, which is the establishment of the two caliphates, which we see the Umayyad and the Abbasid Caliphate. But here in this position from 661 AD onwards, and then again from 750 AD onwards, we see that there are cultural developments along with the political developments. So these cultural developments ultimately can be looked at um, in the spectrum of the golden age of Islam. So they were developed in the golden age of Islam. But why exactly is this time period, why exactly is this time period known as the golden age of Islam is something that we will have to learn about. So we are then at a point of time when Harun al-Rashid has become the new caliph under the Abbasid Caliphate. Now when he was ruling, Abbasid Caliphate reached the extreme amount of peace and prosperity. So we see that in Harun al-Rashid's quote, there is patronization of uh, various subjects such as science, mathematics, then we see literature developing and art and culture. So all in all, his rule therefore was a very prosperous amount of uh, time that the Abbasids were there. Now, uh, there's an interesting fact about Harun al-Rashid's rule. That is, um, Harun al-Rashid often it is said that would dress up as a very normal person, as a normal uh, town dweller and would go out in the night to see the situation um, of the state, of the place that the people lived in and the condition of the state so that he could make the changes later. So can you then tell me under whom the golden age of Islam flourished? Was it Harun al-Rashid? Was it Abu Bakr or Uthman? That's right. It is Harun al-Rashid. So then, as we were discussing, that in Harun al-Rashid's quote um, and his ideas of, um, you know, encouragement and patronization of various aspects of culture, we see that he also established a library in Baghdad. And this library was known as Bayat al-Hikman, which was the house of wisdom. Now, if you look at your screen, you will see a manuscript right here from the house of wisdom and one of the map that was drawn, the world map from the house of wisdom. In this map, if you uh, look at this map, you will see that the blue areas that are marked here are the seas. And this was basically the way they imagined the world to be, the map to be, so that they could start, um, you know, with their trading journeys and this would help them navigate. 
So one of the other aspects during the caliphate of the Abbasids was that they were amazing traders. So in order for all these advancements to happen, we of course require a situation or an environment where these advancements can take place. So we need economy to support the environment. And in order for that economy to flow in, we then require trade to happen for commerce to flourish and as we stated that Abbasid caliphs or Abbasid caliphate was a uh, was a caliphate that saw the growth in trade. Now you will have to realize that the caliphate was established in an area which was a desert area, right? So in order to make a commerce, to make a living and a livelihood out of trade, they would have to trade with other empires as well. So we see that under the territorial extent of the Abbasid dynasty, there are amazing trade routes that these people are developing. And while doing so, we also see that they are interacting with different people. So as and when they traded, they were interacting and intermixing with the ideas of other places as well and other people as well. So they were gathering the knowledge from Greeks, Indians, Persians and Romans because as you can see here the trade routes went from west to east so till India here and here till Rome and again from the Atlantic Ocean as well and of course the Sahara Desert and Africa. Now, in doing so, in this intermixing or in this, um, you know, taking of other cultures, other ideas, we see that Arabic becomes the primary language. So, Arabic was developed as an international language in the medieval period, in this particular period of the Abbasid Caliphate. In order for the traders and travelers to trade comfortably, they built something which was a, um, a house or a building that was known as the caravan serai. Now, what was a caravan serai? As you can see here, the architectural pattern had so many houses, so many places with doors and basically rooms. So this was like a rest house for the travelers because they had to travel long distances. They would um, wait here, rest and then again leave. Now, the Abbasids developed a very strong banking system as well. We have seen that they developed the coinage system of uh, making gold and silver coins and they took this inspiration from the Byzantine Empire. So their coinage system was one of the factors that made um, the Abbasid a very flourishing empire as well. We see that there is a development of various industries as well. So we can see that the silk industry is flourishing where brocade work is being done. Then we see leather industries flourishing where leather products, leather carpets are being produced. Um, and then also the carpet work, the various carpet work that was done at that point of time. So here as well, you can see the Abbasid Caliphs quote in this picture and you can see how he is patronizing these people. So you can very well understand then how exactly a state was patronizing different practices. So one of the most common and famous fables that we all know is that of Panchatantra which is an ancient Indian text that was primarily written in Sanskrit which later saw a translation into Persian version during the Golden Age. So we see that Panchatantra was translated into Persian during the Golden Age itself. And if you take a look at this picture here, it is the representation of 1001 Nights which is also one of the famous stories that we hear and this finds a representation of of the Abbasid Caliphate Harun al-Rashid. 
so if you look at the screen then of course you see these famous posters of the story that we have grown up reading right so these stories are also about uh, then the times of of this this caliphate the middle eastern um, you know ideologies and the middle eastern culture so these stories for example that of ali baba and the 40 thieves Aladdin and the Magic Lamp, Sinbad the Sailor, all these stories then were developed during this point of time that we are discussing about. As we have already learned that trade was an integral part of this society that we are talking about. So there were also various items of trade, right? So here you can see in the picture the mm, uh, you know camel caravans that they used. to travel and trade to various places and this is one of the trading items so you can see the bowl of the golden age here you can see how the calligraphy has been written and no other sort of um, uh, you know pattern is done just the geometric pattern and the calligraphy therefore as we saw that um, due to this intermixing of cultures due to the trade uh, people were also taking in the ideas of various subjects from these other people that they were meeting from other regions so we see the development of concepts of science in middle east as well concepts of um, medicine and mathematics is also being focused upon so here we can see Razes, who was basically a person of medicine, uh, a doctor, is treating a child here, right? And uh, in this painting, we see scholars of the Abbasid Library. So you see all of these people in a court-like structure. So this is the library, the House of Wisdom that we are talking about. So here, um, you know, all mm, uh, kinds of study would then take place. now as we are discussing about the fact that science developed astronomy was also a part of science as we have seen earlier so astrolabe which was an instrument used by the greeks to identify the position of stars and planets was also brought to the middle east and they applied it in their own society so we see therefore that they are bringing the ideas from different places and accumulating it in their own society so we see ibn sina as one of the most eminent people in medicine who we find in this age now ibn sina or avicenna was one of the scholars who was patronized in the house of wisdom as you can see from this particular picture now He, he created a uh, you know one of the books that is the most famous book in medicine which is referred to till date is the canon of medicine which was originally created in the arabic language now here if you see this is one of his work which was about the structure of the eye and you can look at the great detailing that has been done here uh with the structure of the eye and such a great detailing at that age was anyway difficult to make so we see that ibn sina being somebody who was very foresighted and the development of medicine therefore happened because of people like him during those times the people who used to study the subject of chemistry were known as alchemists right so at that point of time they believed in an idea which uh, stated that uh, the philosopher's stone or this particular stone called the philosopher's stone would turn any sort of ordinary metal into gold which was a precious metal right but in searching the philosopher's stone or in trying to create this philosopher's stone we see that they um, you know create the these new sort of metals which helped them discover new metals and drugs that ultimately uh, led them towards the modern chemistry so here you can see the philosopher's stone and here is the islamic chemistry teacher or uh, the teachers and the scholars who used to do these experiments and 
uh, studies. Now, in the field of mathematics as well, we see that these people are taking inspiration from the regions which lay beside them. So, these people, the Arabs, took the system, the decimal system from the Indians. So, the de decimal system which goes from 0 to 9 was taken from the Indians. And the development of algebra was also done by them. So, the Arabs, therefore, we see borrowing the decimal system and the concept of zero from India. As we had started with locating the architectural features of uh, the Islamic times, we are to go back to it again because that was the most famous uh, sort of a development that happened in the Islamic world and which was then taken to the other parts or the other regions as Islam spread. So here, if you look at this picture, we see the picture of the famous monument of Qutub Minar, which is situated in India. But the pattern of the minar or the minaret was taken from the Islamic culture itself. Now, Minarets were basically tall buildings that were created by them. So, under the umbrella term of Islamic architecture, we not only see various monuments such as mosques or, uh, you know, buildings that we have come to see, but in fact, educational centers were being built, libraries were being built, we then see hospitals, tombs and palaces. So, every sort of architecture then, they were bound under this, um, you know, cultural and architectural change. So, many minarets, therefore, like the Qutub Minar in India, were built during this period. So, this was the structure of, uh, you know, the minarets that were being built and then it later got assimilated into the Indian architecture as well. Now, we started with the Taj Mahal itself, right? But in the Taj Mahal, apart from the minarets, you can also see the beautiful domes that are there, the structure of the domes. So, where do these domes come from? These also come from the Islamic Golden Age. So, domes were important architectural features that were developed during this point of time. Now, if you look at the picture here, then you see a pattern of the domes. Not exactly like the church domes that we see, but shorter domes. So, here again you see, uh, you know, several domes being used in one um, architectural building itself. And then here again the pattern of domes can be situated. So, this was specifically something that can be located in um, Islamic architecture. Now, in doing so or in um, making these changes, we could see that there was a spread of the Islamic uh, sort of culture, ideology, as well as the thought process behind it. So, these see of patterns that were being made, the, the architectural bodies or the monuments that were being made also you know, held the ideologies of the um, uh, religion of Islam itself. So, how did the, these monuments then propagate the ideas or the ideologies of the religion? Is that the religion does not support a sort of idol worship or figurine, uh, in fact, in the religion. So, we do not see the use of figurines in the monuments as well. So, here then we can look at how the calligraphies or the various geometric and the floral patterns that were used in the monuments and in the paintings because Islam prohibits the use of any human form in decoration. So, these people, the Islamic, uh, you know, the people from the Islamic world were excellent calligraphers who also included various verses from their holy book of Quran in a pattern of calligraphy. 
thus we see how uh, the ideas of the islamic state the islamic religion was propagated and spread in various cultural spheres and in various spheres of life that would ultimately uh, you know be been taken and later assimilated into the ideas of the modern world as well don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now